everyone. I've had a lot of requests for a beginner level mandala on a small stone, so here we go. I got my inspiration from a piece of jewelry that my husband gave me. This is a cross set into a Star of David down in Opal, and I decided to look at some other cross designs from other cultures. This is a Celtic cross that you uh, might find in Ireland or Scotland. And this is an Ethiopian cross, very unusual, very angular. And this is another design of an Ethiopian cross. And then I also looked at a Byzantine cross done with some beautiful jewels. And another, uh, this is called an angel cross with the flared edges and the filigree in between. And this is a medieval cross. So that was the inspiration for this design today. I started with a small dark stone and I painted an orange circle. And now I'm starting with a cobalt blue large dot in the center of the circle and then using a lighter shade of blue to make a plus sign. And then I'll be filling in, in that same shade, two dots in between each of those spokes. I'm using my small polymer clay sculpting tool with the fine point to do these small dots. Then I'll be using the light blue again to do the plus sign in a, a slightly larger dot with my uh, manicure stylus. And I'm going to be making radials out from this. So this is a slightly larger periwinkle blue dot added just a little bit of lavender to that. And then I went for uh, a, an even lighter shade of purple, a more true lavender, a little darker right on the edge there of the orange. So you can see I have just a basic cross shape here. And I'm going to be filling in in between each of these with a larger shade of of blue here in a larger tool, excuse me. This is the same light blue that I used to make the first row around the center dot. And then once again I'm using the same lavender to finish off that row. Give me some consistency around the outside of the mandala. Now in that row I'll be putting two small purple dots right on either side there, almost makes a little snowman shape. There, that finishes those four rows. Now I'm going to be walking that up in a lime green, I'm using my smallest tool, and just walking that right up there. There's not a lot of space, you've got to be careful You can get it in there and this will give the uh, design kind of a, an illuminated effect from behind. It will make it seem as if there's light coming from behind it. Now I'm going to use my small tool to walk some white dots around the end of my first row. all the way around. And I decided to do a second row in the white as well. A lot of the Byzantine crosses had this second row done in gold and you could do that. I just decided to stick with the white because it showed up so well while I was filming. But gold would look very nice too. There we go, got that all done on those rows. Now I'm just using the lime green again in a slightly larger dot right at the end of these rows to help bring your eye outward in the cross shape.
I'm going to prepare a little bit of paint here. This is the folk art color flash and the turquoise. I'm going to be using that for top dots a little bit later. Didn't have any room left on my palette, so I just kind of stuck it on top there. But I'm going to be doing some more blue uh, top dots first because I wanted to have this uh, little bit of a lapis lazuli look on the cross because that was such a common jewel to use in Byzantine jewelry. So here's a little darker shade of blue on top and I'll also be putting that on the lavender. And this is a pretty thick paint. It's going to really dry and a little stand up bump and it will look almost like a jewel. Now I'm using the Folk Art Color Shift in the purple to do top dots on our first row. And this has a great iridescence when it's dry. There we go. Now I can go back and use that turquoise. Do a few top dots with that. And then I'm going to use a larger tool to go in between each of the rows with a larger dot of the turquoise. I really like how this paint looks against a dark stone. It's very bright and almost glowing. It looks like a, a jewel on the rock even when it's dry. And you can see I'm kind of moving slowly in doing this. This paint is pretty sticky and you have to pull up your tool slowly because there will be a little string attached to it, almost like glue. And you don't want that string to flop over and, and hit another color. So you just have to move slowly, pull it straight up, let that string snap off and go back down into the little puddle of paint and it will form a, a nice little domed dot that will dry into a, a beautiful little jewel. So we're done with our painting on our design. And this is how it looks. And I also did this on a black background so you could see the difference. A little smaller rock, but it's the same design. You can see on the black there's a little bit more definition in the middle. But with the orange background, and especially when I pull out here with the camera, you can see that it really does have the effect of it, of the of it's almost glowing. And that's kind of what I was going for with the contrasting color of the purples and blues against the orange background. Now I've sprayed these rocks with their finishing spray, the Rust-Oleum Triple Glaze. So they're kind of shiny and dark like they're wet. And I decided that we'd go all the way with this one and put a few Swarovski crystals on it. I had these beautiful turquoise, almost a dark teal. And then I also had some amethyst crystals, only had a few left of those. So I chose a bigger one for the center of this stone. And I have the stone ready to go here. It's all nice and dry. And I'm going to just set my stones on there I always do this when I decide I'm going to use crystals. I'll set them on the stone and just sort of step back and look at them, turn the light off, turn the light on, and just make sure that that's the effect I want before I glue them on. So that looks pretty good. So I'm going to take those off and get my glue. And I just squirt a little bit onto the paper and use my manicure stylus to transfer little glue dots where I want them. And then I get my tweezers and set those stones right in. And I press pretty firmly, especially if I've done top dots. I want to push down all the way to make sure that those stones aren't rocking back and forth. I want them to really set in there firmly. And then that glue is going to dry clear and you won't, you won't see it around the edges at all. Okay, 
cool. So that is our finished design. You can see how pretty those crystals are. They just really give it an added something, especially if you're doing a piece based on jewelry. So I thought I'd set this on a beautiful little piece of paper here so you can really get the effect of our Byzantine cross mandala. And you could try this with other contrasting colors too and see the effects that you want. Thanks for watching everybody. Until next time, join me on my Facebook page.